Hi, this is Digital Lady Sid, and today I'm just doing a quick little tutorial on a technique that I have used for a while, and I thought maybe everybody else would enjoy it. It's about how to add texture to an image without adding color to the image, meaning the color is going to come from the image itself, not the texture. And this is actually very simple, and everybody's thinking, well, why is this so hard? It really isn't, but I thought I'd do a few, ex a couple examples just to show you. Um, uh, what I'm talking about here. So this is um, my final result right here. This is the uh, fountain, the frog and turtle fountain <laughs> at uh, Flagler College. And uh, this is supposed to have all this meaning. The frogs are the hours of the day and the turtles are the seasons and everything. But it looks like they're just having a what I call a spitting contest here. <laughs> but I think it's one of the funniest fountains I've seen and actually a lot of fun. And it looks like they're having a lot of fun. <laughs> So, one of my favorites. So what I'm going to do is, I wanted to show you what my original image was because this is, this is how I start off. This is not very good image because you can see the person trooping through the back. And I did have a couple other versions of this so I could kind of clone over these steps and everything and get that rough look because the, it actually isn't very, um, the, the walls and everything back here are not that clean. But um, you could see that um, it did need some work done to it. So obviously I did that and voila, she's gone. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is um, I, I added in a texture and I chose this one by French Kiss. It's called uh, Secret Garden and I don't particularly have a favorite texture by her or, or any particular um, person because I, I love a lot of the texture people, you know, uh, French Kiss, uh, Two little studios, uh, Jay Johnson, um, 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 who is it, Melissa Gallo. I mean, all these people had have fabulous uh, textures, and I'm sure I've left out a couple others. Uh, Flypaper. I mean, these people are great, and I also make my own because sometimes I like to just fool around with. Some, I've gotten an interesting brush, and I like to fool around with it. And you can make some nice textures with your own brushes, especially if you go into that little texture section in your brushes and add in a pattern. And you can make some interesting brushes just to make your own textures. But in this case, I really like to use um, uh, Nicole's uh, from French Kiss, her, her textures, because they're always very painterly. She, definitely paints her her textures. So what we're going to show you here is I added this one in. Now at 100% and I'm going to put it to normal. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Um, at 100% it's very pretty and it's a beautiful oil kind of look. So the first thing you do is you put a um, hue saturation adjustment layer and you clip it. You can clip it by just going down in the panel and see if I I can unclip it or clip it right there. And it's clipped. You can see that because it's got the little arrow going down here to show that it's clipped. Now, you don't mess with the hue saturation adjustment layer as far as changing the um, blend modes. or You could adjust the opacity if you want, but it's just going to, it's it kind of defeats the purpose of what you're doing here. You can go down though to your French Kiss uh, texture and just reduce your opacity, which obviously you're never going to want it at 100%. So I j adjusted it down to um, like a, you know, 33, 40% there. Yeah, let's go up to 40 there. And it, you know, it, it doesn't look that great. You obviously have to change your blend mode. And when you change your blend mode, then that brings up a lot of the colors out of your image that you can use. And now you can adjust it better. And I think I had this set to vivid light because I kind of wanted to keep that pastel color look and everything. Now, a lot of times I will put on the very, as a very last step here, whoops, is to add a um, levels. Or you could do a curves, either one. Uh, levels will adjust out, like you can just adjust out just uh, some of the blacks if you want to increase them, decrease them, adjust your midtones, because textures definitely darken a photo down. In this case, you could do that a little bit, and it just, you know, brings that back. So that is one way. Um, that is one, um, or this is the way I do it. Uh, what I wanted to show you was using different textures, though. This is a texture 
um, from a mini workshop it looks like I got it. It looks like, uh, I don't know who, whose that texture that is, but you can see it gives a very different look. It's, um, oh, in fact, I think this might be one of Melissa's, I'm not sure. But if I pull that all the way up to 100% and change this back to normal, you can see what a very different effect this has in the, in the actual painting itself. And then if I change it back to the hard light um, and lower that opacity, it gives a very different look to the to the same image. So I just kind of wanted to show you it can make a big difference which which uh, painterly look you're going after. Okay, I wanted to show you the one I did from SeaWorld, which here's what the original image looked like there, and um, and actually I put a little bit of Topaz Simplify in it. And then once again, here is French Kiss, and I put her put that back up to normal. Beautiful. Absolutely what a beautiful texture, I think. But if we um, go back in history and change that back, you can see what a pretty job it does to this image. I mean, here's your, here's your hue saturation set to minus 100, and then here's your contrast. And it just, you know, I adjusted the tones up a little bit here just to bring them back a little after, after the... Um, texture darkened it down. So you can just see, you can play with your midtones, uh, cut off some of the darks if you want to give it sort of a matte look and you're done. So that is all I had to tell you, but it is kind of a fun technique and I just thought I would share that with you because I use it all the time. And uh, if you want to follow me some more, you can go to sidspix.wordpress.com and that is where I wrote a blog on this, which has the steps written down. If you're like me, I love to have the steps someplace where I can look at them. I'll have a link to that down below. And I have my uh, www.digitalladysid.com, which is my fun tidbits blog where I just do all kinds of crazy things and fun things. And Sometimes I present some free resources there, so check it out when you get a chance. And my website's at sidjohnson.com. So hope everybody has a great week, and I will catch you soon. Bye.